Hatem Bazian, I want to ask you about the condemnation that has come largely through mainstream media towards the protest across the United States in support of Palestine. And it's this notion that people at these protests uh, have not condemned the acts of Hamas and their attack against Israel and basically have not shown an appropriate amount of empathy for what has happened in Israel. I was watching CNN last week and the anchor Dana Bash was covering such one such protest and as she was doing it seemingly as a neutral news anchor she then went on to editorialize that and I'm paraphrasing here that the protesters seem to have lost their moral compass and then you've also seen a number of editorials come out in the New York Times one of the most read newspapers in all of the world uh, basically saying the same thing. And I want to quote from one here by Michelle Goldberg, New York Times columnist, I think is considered to be a progressive. Last week she wrote a piece called The Massacre in Israel and the Need for a Decent Left. And I'm going to quote from it. It's this. Many progressive Jews have been profoundly shaken by the way some on the left are treating the terrorist mass murderers as civilians as noble acts of anti-colonial resistance. These are Jews who share the left's abhorrence of the occupation of Gaza and of the enormities inflicted on it, which are only going to keep worse if and when Israel invades. But the way keyboard radicals have condoned war crimes against Israelis has left many progressive Jews alienated from political communities they thought that were their own. By now you've probably seen examples. There was the giddy message put out by the National Committee of Students for Justice in Palestine which proclaimed, quote, Today we witness a historic win for the Palestinian resistance across land, air, and sea. New York's chapter of the Democratic Socialist of America promoted a rally where speakers applauded the attacks, and the Connecticut DSA enthused, quote, Yesterday the Palestinian resistance launched an unprecedented anti-colonial struggle, end quote. The president of NYU Student Bar Association wrote in its newsletter, letter, quote, I will not condemn Palestinian resistance, end quote leading to withdrawal of a job offer. Over the otherwise benign slogan, I stand with Palestine, Black Lives Matter Chicago posted a photo of a figure in a paraglider like those Hamas used to descend on a desert rave and turn it into a killing field. Again, that was from Michelle Goldberg last week in the New York Times. Hatam Bazian, how do you respond to all of this? Are you struggling in your calculus class? Do you have a hard time understanding your instructor? Do you wish there was a simpler way? I get it, it's frustrating. You go to class expecting answers only to walk away with more questions. And because your teacher and your textbook skip those important in-between steps, you lose valuable study time, Googling homework problems, desperately searching for the things you're missing. You don't have time for that, and it doesn't have to be this way. Hi, I'm Jen, founder of Calc Workshop, and I've helped thousands of students learn calculus over the past 15 years. I'm a certified calculus teacher and I've taken my classroom online with a detailed step-by-step -step instruction so you'll learn the how-to along with the ever-important why for all major concepts taught in a calculus class. And I'm so proud to help students like Scott, who likes how Calc Workshop walks through every step of the problem with a detailed explanation of how and why to get the result. And Jack, who enjoys that complex topics are explained in... Well, I would like to begin by first... Uh... Speaking of uh, Wadi' al Fayyum, uh, the six year old Palestinian kid in Chicago, uh, that his landlord, uh, 71 year old Joseph Kazuba, uh, went up, knocked on their door, uh, tried to choke the mothers uh, of Wadi' and as she ran to call 911, uh, this 70 year old Joseph Kazuba. Uh, stabbed uh, Wadiya 26 times, killing him, and also uh, attacking his mother that she's right now in critical condition in the hospital. Why do I talk about Wadiya? Because uh, the media immediately after uh, the attacks that took place on October 7th went almost full throttle on of incitement and projecting without any nuanced uh, type of coverage uh, of dashing behind uh, Netanyahu and his right-wing uh, 
government, in essence, to uh, sanction and authorize revenge. Now, I would take uh, seriously New York Times or Michelle Goldberg if I have seen the long history of any condemnation relative to Israel's crime uh, against the Palestinians. Well, did Michelle Goldberg wrote, wrote any editorial when in 2021 Israel leveled, leveled and bombed uh, much of Gaza again, uh, killing hundreds of individuals, even collapsing the media tower uh, with AP and other agencies in there? Now, the discourse that Palestinians have often been accustomed to that Israel violence is excused under this uh, rubric of Israel have the right to defend itself. Never in the mind of uh, political elites in the US or Europe to pose the question, do the Palestinians have the right to defend themselves? Do the Palestinians deserve safety, security in their homes and lands? And even if we, for a minute, set Gaza aside, how about the West Bank? The West Bank is an area that is controlled by the Palestinian Authority, which have signed a peace treaty with Israel in 1993. They recognize Israel, right? Again, with Oslo. Yet, almost every day, between two to four Palestinians are shot, killed by Israeli soldiers and unleashing the settlers on the Palestinians. So if your uh, Michelle Goldberg lens is only thinking of reducing Palestinian to Hamas, again, think, thinking in relations to Gaza, I'll pose the question to all those Johnny come lately of colonial uh, interpreters and sympathizers, where is your condemnation of the assaults on the Palestinians in the West Bank as we speak today. Do you remember the names of individuals? Do you humanize their families? Do you go and visit and try to actually identify their names, their ages, their hobbies, who their relatives are, and if they have any linkages? More importantly, if we think about the journalists that are covering, how come if you are concerned about human rights, where is the condemnation for the uh, assassination of Shirin Abu Akli, the journalist, right there in front of everybody's eyes, yet the United States government and Shirin Abu Akli is an American citizen, yet there was no concern. Actually, the U.S. government suppressed any type of investigation of itself, of its own citizens. So I, don't, I can't take really seriously a, both the mainstream media, which never actually missed an opportunity to celebrate and incite for another war, reminding the New York Times, we still, your uh, uh, giving front page coverage to push for the war in Iraq is unforgivable because President Bush could decide on invading Iraq on his own. He did not need eight front page articles with Judith Miller actually pushing the war, uh, the weapons of mass destruction, and yet your editors, your uh, publishers never actually posed that question. So in larger context, uh, progressives have always been progressives except on Palestine. And Michelle Goldberg and the Latte progressives never ever have come to reconcile themselves that Israel is a settler colonial state supported by the United States, put into Palestine, imposed upon the Palestinian by the Western world as the last colonial project to be commissioned in the earlier 20th century. Palestinians don't have to be angels in order for people to actually sympathize and demand an end for settler colonialism. But it seems even when Palestinians are, quote, angels in terms of nonviolence, because on the one hand, if Palestinians call for PDS, you call it anti-Semitism, and it's called for destruction of Israel. Nonviolent movement. And if they engage in violence, then they become, quote, use the term animals, and they need to be wiped out. Or as Lindsey Graham is saying, 
flatten the place or turning into a parking lot. So again, the media discourses in the United States and just important, no US media uh, outlet is actually reporting from inside Gaza. Talk about abdication of responsibility, right? None, not CNN, not Fox, not ABC, not NBC. None of them are reporting from Gaza and they are actually interviewing uh, Israeli spokespeople, Israeli soldiers that are actually committing and actually speaking about committing war crimes. Uh, just yesterday on CNN, uh, the person says, we don't have a war on Hamas, we have a war on civilians. And yet the CNN reporter did not even take an issue nor pose the rightful question, which is a real journalist would do. So American journalism leaves much to be desired. In essence, what we have is imperial journalism. Uh, if Israel is uh, bombing Gaza civilian, uh, Western journalists basically are celebrating, inciting, and justifying uh, the killing of Palestinians without any tab of uh, consideration or examination. So the killing of Wadi al Fayyum by the 70 year old, the responsibility is both is on the journalists that make the demonization of Palestinians an everyday practice. And as such, President Biden is calling the family, but he himself is part of the problem when he stood in there and said that uh, Palestinians have decapitated uh, children and babies, that he saw the picture. That was a completely fake uh, piece that he himself from the pulpit of the White House demonized and created the conditions that resulted in the stabbing of Wadiya by a 70-year-old man in uh, Illinois, uh, in the suburb of uh, Chicago in, in Illinois. Again, there there is this notion with this condemnation towards the protest that people are not condemning what Hamas did a little over a week ago. Uh, and in, in fact, are even some, I think in smaller quarters, are calling it an act of resistance. How do you respond to that? How does this weird tiny device help with dust and airborne pollutants? Studies show that air pollutants Again, uh, history did not begin October 7. And for those who demand condemnation of Palestinians, if they demonstrated the history of their own condemnation of Israel's actions and activities and colonization for the past 75 years, then I would have a moral ethical conversation with them about recognizing the pain and suffering that inflicts anyone, including uh, Israeli Jews in this in the circumstances. But it seems the question of condemnation is a silencing question. It is basically asking those who are speaking to authorize Israel's revenge and bombing of civilians in Gaza. Therefore, the questions of condemnation, the question is attempting to control the discourse to all for us to be dashing behind Netanyahu, his war machine, US positioning of troops and weapons, and not allow any critique of the long history that brought this around. So the one who asked for this, let me ask you to condemn the massacres that have been committed against the Palestinians. Where were your con condemnation in 2021? Where is your condemnation in actually when Israeli troops, not in Gaza, but in the West Bank, when they actually moved into Al-Aqsa Mosque during the 27th night of Ramadan, the most sacred night in the holy month, and they beat people, uh, fire stung the rain, fire bullets in the middle of Al-Aqsa Mosque. Where was your con condemnation? Or did that did not fit your idealistic progressive notions of what a protest needs to take place? Where was your condemnation in 2014? Where literally in uh, almost 600 uh, children were wiped out by Israel's forces, or 2012, or 2008. Or more importantly, where was your condemnation, really, on the Sabra and Shatila massacre? Did you speak about it? Did you actually say anything? Going even back, have you ever spoke about the Nakba? Have you ever recognized the Nakba? Have you actually considered that 750,000 Palestinians and liquid cleanse? Have you ever actually recognized that there is 90% of the Gaza population is actually refugees that were expelled from their homes, lands that are just across the fence, the wall, 
the barrier that Israel has built. They see their villages, they see their towns, they still have the keys to their houses. So where was your condemnation in there and never missing an opportunity to continue to support every Israeli crime that's being committed against the Palestinians. So our history and our erasure is accepted as the norm, right? And then the discussion becomes that violence returned to the Holy Land. And as again, I often say, did violence take a break throughout every day? It only returns when Israel and Palestinians commit anything. If I see people being consistent, right, in their condemnation and their recognition, then we could have an ethical moral conversation. But these, but individuals who come to actually pose their question, they actually call for more aid to Israel, more bombs to be sent, more bombing, and yet they want to play the Gandhian ethics and try to quote MLK in your face as if what you call the rebirth and the re-emergence of this uh, notions of the pure ethical moral uh, compass that they operate by. So that's why for Palestinians, we're constantly being asked to engage in this uh, uh, condemnation circle, right? So if you ask us to condemn the PDS, which is a nonviolent movement, because you label it the civilian, so what options do you leave the Palestinians, right? So that's really the questions for uh, individuals that put this uh, uh, piece on the table. Lastly, uh, there are 6, 000, almost 6,000, like 5,250 Palestinian political prisoners in Israeli jail. Among them, about 170 women, 35 kids. They've been rotting in jail. Nobody actually, actually says anything about them in any type of conversation. 2.3 million in Gaza, the largest open air prison. There's no water. It's a war crime. Cutting off water is a war crime. Cutting off food supply is a war crime. Cutting a supply of medicine is a war crime. Bombing civilian buildings, war crime. If you have an issue with Hamas, again, between the Israeli uh, military, if you want, that's your what you call your beef. Go have, have your beef. But where, the, where is your condemnation of actually uh, bombing apartment buildings, apartment complexes? And to say that there is no innocent because this, these are uh, civilian Hamas is there, then they're responsible. Then that's the same logic again that you apply so if you're consistent again i respect we could have a moral ethical conversation and discuss these ethics but you can't on the one hand support war crime genocide and then the other hand uh claim to be the purest of pure when it when the shoe is on the other uh, foot in this case